America's largest cave art dates back over 1,000 years and was recently rediscovered in Alabama. Now, roughly 1,000 years ago, artists working in the light of burning reeds or oil carved figures into the ceiling of a cave in what's now Alabama, crouching in the narrow space below. Over the millennia that followed, the carvings became almost invisible to the naked eye as they got covered by mud that naturally accumulated on the cave's walls. Now, those carvings have been revealed by advanced photography as the largest set of carvings ever found inside a cave in North America. Some of them depicting figures almost seven feet long. Now, several of the carvings seem to show people wearing Native American regalia, such as headdresses, and carrying what appears to be rattles. Researchers think they could represent spirits of the dead. They are either people dressed in regalia to look like spirits, or they are spirits, said archaeologist Jan Semek, a professor of anthropology at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. And if they were people dressed as spirits, they were for a time considered the spirits themselves. The term we like to use is that they were materializing those spirits through the costumes that they wore, he said. Simek is the lead author of the research paper on the carvings published Tuesday in the Journal of Antiquity. It describes five of the largest figures ever found on a cave ceiling ever in North America. And they were revealed by photographic study that originally aimed to record the cave's carvings in case they became damaged or invisible. Four of the figures seem to be people wearing regalia, while the fifth is a coiled snake, probably a diamondback. Now, we disagree with this interpretation, but we'll get to that later. The cave in northern Alabama, well, the researchers are keeping its precise location quite secret, is the richest prehistoric cave art site in North America, according to the paper's authors. It's one of a thousand caves within the southern part of the Appalachian Plateau, a huge region of karst, heavily eroded limestone that runs from southern Pennsylvania all the way to Alabama. Known to science only as the 19th unnamed cave, it extends for miles beneath the surface, and hundreds of carved figures are incised into the ceiling of the dark zone which are filled with stalactites and stalagmites. We do have a picture there. And these carvings are beyond the light from the entrance. Now the team estimates that the carvings were made about a thousand years ago by people who lived during the late woodland phase of the Native American culture in the region. And you're looking at the South Appalachian Mississippian Indians. The Etowah, the Hobbs Island, the Nacoches, the Bessemer. These are all tribes in that region. Moundville. The carvings in the cave are unlike those found above the ground in the region, which usually depict other subjects in different styles often in red paint. Now, caves were regarded by many Native American traditions as entrances to the underworld. And the distinctive style of the cave art seems to reflect this, according to the authors. Although the entrance to the cave is large, the distance between the floor and the ceiling quickly narrows as you enter to between three or four feet in the dark zone. And would it, it would have been 
similar when the carvings were made. That means that the Native American artists could not have seen the entirety of the figures they were carving. Here we see probably 100 feet of the cave ceiling with some of the seven meter figures, or seven foot figures pictured. Most of these are two meters in length. So we're looking at probably 50 meters here. And a single human would only span the length of this entire image, so it would be impossible to see what you were carving. Absolutely fascinating. Now, the artists probably burned clusters of reeds to give them light, and the ancient deposits of these reeds are now found throughout the cave. The carvings were cut into the mud veneer of the cave's ceiling, possibly with a stone tool or or two. And the process of accumulating layers of mud on the surface has continued since they were made. Many of the carvings are now almost invisible. And Simic and his colleagues only discovered them after making precise photographic models of part of the cave ceiling, a technique known as photogrammetry, which combines digital photographs with computerized models of three-dimensional space. Now, a co-author of the study, Tennessee-based photographer Stephen Alvarez, who founded the Ancient Art Archive in 2017 and the carvings in Alabama's 19th unnamed cave help inspire the project. The cave was discovered back in the 90s by Atlanta-based caver Alan Kressler, who is another co-author of the new paper. And after visiting the cave with Simic several years later, Alvarez saw they could better document its carvings with photogrammetry. When he tried it out, not only could we see engravings, but there were hundreds, if not thousands more than they had realized. The new study comprises more than 14,000 photographs, yet it covers only a tiny portion of the ceiling. Many more carvings are likely to be found. Now, these are petroglyphs on the ceiling of a dark cave. Mind-blowing. The Native American tradition of cave carving in the southeastern U.S. is different in style and technique from the better-known tradition of rock art in the southwest, here where I sit, where paintings and carvings are usually made on cliff faces and exposed rock overhangs, like you see here in Mesa Verde. But photogrammetry is also having a major impact here. A professor of archaeology, Radek Polanak, at the Jagiellonian University in Poland, studied Native American rock art in the Mesa Verde region for several years using this technique. Photogrammetry is one of the best methods to document and reveal new data, especially for rock art images, often barely visible or not visible to the naked eye, he said in an email. Polonka also remarked on the importance of the latest study in documenting the cave carving tradition. This particular study, besides showing the potential of using advanced photographic techniques for the archeological record and to protect cultural heritage, can also shed some light on the Eastern woodland religious practices because the carvings are extremely unique. These petroglyphs on mud on the ceiling of a cave are similar to some I've seen, but they are unique in totality. Do they represent people in costumes? Do they represent similar godlike figures in the Southwest, which we've documented? And these are the Kachina. They certainly look like Kachina to me. But what are the Kachina at the source? Were they plasma phenomena in the night sky witnessed 
looking towards the north. And then handed down through generations as gods. We're going to go through some of the figures right now. And this is the Rattler Man, depicted as wearing a mask, a full outfit holding two different rattles. Or is this an early depiction of Squatter Man, where you can only see three appendages? And this clearly is not a humanoid. It's something else. Is it another phase of the plasma instability? Where this is a different depiction of the duck head? Visible in the east? And this clearly here nothing very specific. And this they claim is a diamond back rattler. Well, if you look over here at the image, there's more to it than they're showing. So what is what does their interpretation mean? Did they leave something out? This certainly doesn't look like a diamondback rattler to me. And then another anthropomorph raising his hand and armless over here, but clearly that could have been cut off by some stalactite flow there, which is exactly what happened. But is this just another depiction of a squatter man in a different phase? Notice the foot turned in here and the other leg has no foot or is dragging something. In the, in the side hip basket, or what is that? Will we ever know? What we do know is that using a new photographic technique called photogrammetry, we've been able to reveal the largest seven foot long, some of these glyphs, greater than two meters, petroglyphs on the ceiling of a cave at a scale and size that no human could have actually understood what they were carving. How did they do this? And why? Lying on their backs in this cave, they carved on the ceiling as the rock fell into their eyes. For what purpose? What were they trying to tell us? Because clearly they weren't leaving this message for them. This was for us. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. It seems each and every day, another major breakthrough discovery is occurring. And we're reporting on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. As we prepare for another mind-blowing experience in Rui Doso at Squatterman 2022 in just eight days. Be safe. We love you. That's a boo. Mm -hmm.